In our today's class, we will start with our second chapter that is transistor biasing. Transistor biasing. Now the question comes is what is biasing? Biasing means what is that? It is application of property C voltages across any of the device. Is called as what? Biasing. So now we will see how to bias a transistor. So transistor has got three terminals, isn't it? So we have a transistor. So I have shown what, what this transistor is called as. It is NPN transistor, isn't it? NPN transistor. So it can be of silicon or germanium, isn't it? So it is it can be of silicon or germanium pair. So I have taken silicon transistor. It is an NPN transistor where this L mark shows the direction of current, isn't it? This is NP transistor. So PNP transistor we will write somewhat like this, isn't it? So this is PNP transistor. So this is PNP transistor, this is NP transistor. So we have terminals called as this is collector, this is base and this is emitter. Isn't it? So we have emitter, base, collector. These are the three terminals of your transistor. Isn't it? So we have stated all these things in our last previous year. Isn't it? So now collector, base, and emitter. Emitter is the terminal which emits the charge carriers, and collector is the terminal which collects the charge carriers, and base is the control terminal. Isn't it? So emitter. Emits the charge carriers and that has to go through what base to collector. As we have these charge carriers in the sense here we have N P N. N means what majority charge carriers are what electrons. As electrons move from emitter to collector, so collector current flows from collector to emitter, isn't it? So current through a transistor is what is what. Collector current IC. Okay, so now current through a transistor is called as what? Collector current IC. And for this thing, so we have a transistor which has got three terminals. So we need at least of two bias voltages, isn't it? So two bias voltages need to be applied. One to your base to emitter terminals and other to your output side that is collector to emitter, isn't it? Proper application of your Bias voltages across your base to emitter terminal and collector to emitter terminal is very much important to make your transistor to work as you want. Okay, so for this reason, so we need biasing. Application of proper DC voltages is called as what? Biasing. So now we are learning about transistor biasing. So we will see why we need or like how we will apply the proper DC voltages across the transistor and next thing comes is so we need two bias voltages isn't it? so now next thing comes is need for biasing in transistor biasing what is the need for biasing so this is one of the questions which will be asked and we also ask about biasing. So what is biasing? For one part they can, they can ask. Okay. So now next is transistor biasing needs. So need for biasing. First need is
Now, here are three points for need for biasing. Okay, so what is the need for biasing? So we have written three important points which comes under need for biasing. So first thing is operating point should not should be at the center of the active region. So we have learnt about active region. Active region in the sense saturation region. So saturation region is very much important. In our last previous chapter, we have seen the different different regions in your characteristics graph, isn't it? So active region in the sense saturation region. Then the operating point. Operating point is a point in your transistor uh, characteristics where you may be seeing for the performance of that particular device in your transistor biasing or in your transistor application. So we will see uh, the operating point in the sense. So what is that? It is the point where your transistor is getting operated. So that is called as your operating point. So your tra your transistor is operated at a point. So that point is called as your operating point. So in which region you are operating your transistor? So that point we will specifically will uh, mention where your transistor is operating in the catalyst graph. Okay. So that point is called as what operating point. So we will call it as what operating point or Q point also we will call it as Q point. We will also call it as what Q point. So it is very much important. Okay. So we will uh, come across this many times in this chapter. So operating point should be at the center of the active region. Active region is a saturation region. So operating point should be at the center of the active region. Okay. So then, uh, so why is that needed is, so uh, when you bias your transistor, we will make your transistor to get ready for operation. Okay. So at that time we are not applying any of the input signals. When you apply input signal, so then again the current and voltages vary. Okay. So at that time the operating point should not shift or it should not be uh, going to cutoff region or it should not be going to saturation region. Okay. So uh, that is the point over here. So operating point should be at the center of the active region. Okay. So then next second point is stability of collector current under temperature variations. Okay. So as we know that as current increases or as temperature increases your current also is going to increase or decrease. Okay. So there and there, isn't it? For your uh, semiconductors, we know that as we increase the temperature, current also increases, isn't it? So, and so we, what we need is we need stable current. So we want stable output current to be produced by the transistor on the temperature variations also. So we know that like uh, temperature may increase any time, isn't it? So increase or decrease any time. At that time the collector current should not vary. So if your current, current is getting varied, so then it is not a uh, good thing, isn't it? So that's why we want stable collector current under temperature variation also. Okay, so we need the collector current or output current to be stable. Okay, so as we like we know that temperature uh, affects the current. Okay, so that is why what we need is so need for biasing. So by proper biasing also eliminates the variation of your collector current, isn't it? So stability of collector current is very much important. So second point is stability of collector current against temperature variations. Okay. And third point is what operating point should not shift if you replace transistor or what we have designed a circuit or I have given proper biasing voltages, isn't it? So then if I replace the transistor of the replace the transistor by another transistor of the same time. That time nothing should change. Okay. So this is our third point. Okay. So like that we have three of the important points for biasing. Okay. So this is where we need proper biasing. So to make your transistor to work as you require. So oh, these three points are very much important and they will be asking uh, this question for two months. Okay. So now this is our transistor biasing need. Next term is
So now we are seeing the uh, characteristics of your transistor characteristics. Okay. Okay, now Current. So, base current is your input current. So, base current we will make 
steps of different different base currents, isn't it? So if I make angle one, so this is your base current. So then your characteristics graph will be varying accordingly. As I increase V C E, I C also increases in this manner. For this, I V one. Fine. So then next, if I set I V or base current to I V two, if I set base current to I V two. So if I vary V C E from zero. Likewise, so current to current increases in this manner. Fine. So the next is I P three. If I set base current for I P three, so then current to current increases in this manner. An application of your V C. Okay. So then, if I set for if I set base current for I P four. Then again, current current varies in this manner. An application of your proper output voltage. So what we can make out here is so base current I B four is greater than I B three is greater than I B two is greater than I B one. So as I increase the base current, the output current or current current also varies or increases. As I increase the base current. Output current, that is current to current, increases. So that is why we call transistor as what? Current control device. Input current, in or input current decides the output current, or input current decides or will make the output current quantity. So how much current, output current we are getting at the output? So it is decided by the input current, that is base current. Same thing. So here. Base current is your input current. Current to current is your output current. Or current to the transistor. As I increase the base current, the current to current is also getting increased. So, an application of the output current to emitter voltage. Okay. So, here we can see different different characteristics depending on different different base currents. Is that it? So now here we have seen so many things. So here, as I come to this very less. Current. So this region is called as what? Cutoff region. Is it? We have seen this thing in our previous uh, chapter. Is it? So this is your cutoff region, and here comes the active region. So this is what is cooling region. Is it? So here comes the active region. Active region in the sense, so it is the region where so we have the current, the current which is getting uh, or which is remaining constant almost. So this region is called as what? Active region from here to here. So it is what is called active region. So your operating point, operating point in the sense the transistor where the transistor is operating. So operating point decides where the transistor is operating, and that thing is decided here. What we want by condition is so the operating point should be at the center of the active region. This is your active region, or we can say it as what saturation region. So in this saturation region, the operating Point should be at the center of the uh, active region. So operating point should be somewhere here. Somewhere here it should be. Okay. So we should not go more towards the saturation point. So so this is the maximum point. So that is why it is called as what saturation point. So this is the maximum current what you can expect. Okay. Through your transistor. So that is why we call this as what this point as what saturation point. And here this is the this is the minimum current. So this is what is what cutoff point. We call this as what cutoff point. So okay, fine. So this is saturation point. This is cutoff point. Or uh, the operating point should be at the center of the DC load. Or uh, we can say uh, it has what active region. Okay. So next thing comes is DC load line. So this is very much important thing. Okay. So DC load line. So what is this DC load line? Load line in the sense. Load in the sense. What is that? It is the output device which is getting the current and voltage, isn't it? So that is your load line. So DC load line. So what we call it as what? Well? So we want a straight line. So we are talking about a straight line. So DC load line. So we are talking about what? We are talking about a straight line. So which decides the 
a characteristics graph which is found in the characteristics graph and which will say about the transistor okay so now we will see about the dc load line what is this so dc load line is nothing but it is a straight line it is a straight line drawn in the output characteristics of your transistor which will give us different dc voltages and different dc current values okay so for different dc voltages we have different dc current values isn't it this is an intersection isn't it so if i go for this point this is an intersection where we can see here when we can make out this is your dc and this is your ic isn't it so if i go to this point so this is your dc and this is your ic so for different voltages for different output voltages we have different output currents which will be represented so that is a line so this is a straight line which will represent different output voltages and different output currents in your output characteristics graph so this line is called as what dc load line graph okay so this is called as what dc load line which is found in the output graph of your transistor okay so this is very much important and now what you can make out is oper operating point operating point Sometimes we call it as operating point should be at the center of the active region, and also we we'll call it as what the operating point should be at the center of DC load line. This point also we can say in the need for biasing. Okay, so the operating point should be at the center of the load line. We can say in this manner also. So we can say it as it should be at the center of the active region. So that is also correct, okay. and it should be at the center of the DC load line. So it is a imaginary line. What you can make out. in the output characteristics it will give us different dc voltages and different dc currents okay so this is how we can make out the uh, characteristics graph so important things are dc load line and the active region so let's then put your saturation region this is the region where your transistor will be very much active and it can be operated as or you want it as okay so amplifier amplifier is the best application of your transistor so transistor when operated in your active region it is a best amplifier it gives it gives proper amplification when it is operated in the active region so um, it is uh, done for this class okay so in next class we will discuss about different uh, uh, regions or different uh, values of your output and input currents so that we will see in our next class